Hi, this is Andre. This video is gonna talk about using the Echoplex Digital Pro as a MIDI clock master and having other instruments controlled by it. Thank you very much to Jeff Evans for suggesting and commissioning this particular video through Patreon. There's a couple of specific parameters we're gonna be talking about a lot in this video, so let's take a look at those. In the bottom row, under the insert column, is the sync parameter. The main value we're gonna be using is out, there's a second value called OUS, or Out User Start Song, that we'll also be touching on a little later in the video, but the default setting that we're gonna be using for most of this is Out. Right next to it in the Multiply column is the eighth per cycle parameter. For right now, we're gonna leave that set to eight, which is its default value, but once we get into a little more detail, we're gonna look at how changing that value has a really dramatic effect on whatever is following the EDP. So in the most basic sense, I have Ableton Live on my computer. I have it set to receive external sync from the Echoplex. The Echoplex is sending MIDI clock. And as soon as I finish recording a loop on the EDP, Ableton is gonna start up in time. So here's an open note. Start recording the loop and boom. Now, if you look down here, this is the eighth per cycle display. This tells you exactly how many eight notes are in a cycle. Right now there are eight of these per cycle and the light right above it is the downbeat of the loop, the start point of the entire loop. Now if I record another loop from scratch, the Echoplex will reset. Ableton will wait until I finish recording and then it will start up at the new tempo of the loop. Let me record a couple more loops from scratch. And so forth. Now let's look at the eighth per cycle parameter in a little more detail. The default setting is eight. If you change that value, then the length of the loop is gonna stay exactly the same, but whatever is following the echoplex is going to change its relationship. If we go from eight eighth notes per cycle to four eighth notes per cycle, listen to what happens to the drums. Cuts right in half. If we go from four to two, it's gonna cut it in half again, tempo-wise. And if we go to a higher value, it's going to be a lot faster. <laughs> Comedically fast. Now, the default setting is eight. And as you push through the first values, it gives you some of the most commonly used ones. Four, two, but also things like six. So you can get polyrhythms and metric modulations happening. Let's try 12. It takes a second for Ableton to catch up, but then it locks, gets locked in. Now, after you scroll through some of the most commonly used values and get past 256, you can increase it one at a time. So let's try a few more unconventional eighth per cycle values. Let's try three. Let's try five. Seven. And so forth. And let's go back to eight. So a lot of different possibilities available there. And again, this hasn't been changing the echoplex loop length at all. This has just been changing how many eighth notes 
are being sent out per cycle, and the cycles are multiples of the original loop length. If we remultiply, now we've remultiplied back down to one cycle, but again, the Ableton didn't change its tempo because the sync is based on an eighth per cycle value. Now, if you do an unrounded multiply, Ableton will change. So forth. Now let's say we want to stop everything. You can hit mute. Hitting mute will also stop Ableton as long as the mute mode is set to start. If it's set to continuous, it won't stop. But if you have it set to start, that will stop whatever is following the EDP. When you hit mute again to unmute, then it will start up from the beginning. Both the echoplex will start from the beginning of the loop and Whatever is following the Echoplex, Ableton in this case, will start from the beginning again. It's not quantized, so you can mute and unmute whenever you want. Now let's say that you want to have the loop start up again, but you don't want Ableton to be going. If you get out of mute using undo, Now you have the Echoplex doing its thing, but Ableton isn't following it. If you want it to follow again, hit mute, and then get out of mute with the mute button. And there we go. Now let's talk about a function called tempo select. This actually lets you preset the length of a loop on a BPM, beats per minute basis. You start off in reset on the EDP. You wanna have sync set to out. And if you press undo in reset, now that's a BPM readout. Right now it's 96. And you can go anywhere from 278 all the way down to 26. So let's go to, let's go to 96, right where it was. Now there's several things you can do once you've got your tempo preset. You can see there's already a loop length calculated. If you want to start Ableton at the same time that you start the Echoplex, and you hit record while you're in this state, both are going to start at the same time. and so forth. Let's reset. So that was having the Echoplex start recording at the same time that Ableton started up. Let's say that we want to have Ableton start before we record a loop. So we're in reset again, press undo, 
That gives us our tempo select. We're going to keep it at 96. Now I'm going to do a short press of undo, and that's going to start up Ableton, but it's not going to start recording anything on the EDP. So if I'm playing a note on the guitar and I do a short press of undo, now Ableton has started up, but I'm not recording anything because the Echoplex hasn't started yet. To get something recorded, I have to do a separate press of record on the, on the Echoplex. Now, if you notice, the loop is fading away. That's something that I've run into a little bit when using Tempo Select, because the knob goes from selecting tempo when you're in reset to selecting feedback when you're recording a regular loop. So feedback was set to about 36, which is why it was decaying so quickly. If you're going to do something like this, if you're going to be using a lot of recording with the Echoplex as a master and sending start commands using Tempo Select, what I recommend is you use the safe record mode. The default is toggle. There's a sus version as well. SAF is safe. Safe record means that every time you start recording a brand new loop, feedback is always set to 100%. I don't use it very often myself, but this is a great example of a case where it's good to have because if we're in tempo select mode, let's say I want to change it to something a little slower, something pretty slow, 60 beats per minute. Once I start sending my command to Ableton, you see how now that switched to 18. So now feedback is down to 18 because of where the knob had to be set for tempo select. So if I were to record a regular loop in a regular record mode, let's do that for a second, and you're going to hear that it will die out very quickly because feedback's at a very low volume. Yeah, you can barely hear more than one repetition. So let's stop everything, go into reset, set record mode to safe. Let's adjust tempo select a little bit just so we can mess with the feedback knob. There we go. Now I'm going to do a short press of undo to start up Ableton. Now feedback is set to 24, but because we're in safe record mode, it doesn't matter what the front knob is because as soon as I hit record, it's going to start recording at 100% feedback. Etc. All right. So we've looked at having the Echoplex and Ableton start up at the same time. We've looked at having Ableton start up before the Echoplex. What you can also do is have the Echoplex start up a loop, but not have Ableton do anything until you tell it to start. That's where we're going to get into another sync value called OUS, which stands for Out User Start Song. That just means that you're not going to have anything following the Echoplex, in this case Ableton, or anything that is synced to the Echoplex's MIDI slave. It's not going to start playing until you specifically send it a start song command. So if I start up a new loop on the Echoplex, and you notice Ableton has not started, So I'm going to build up some kind of something here. Not thinking in terms of any particular groove. And let's say, okay, that's going to be my groove, and I want to have Ableton start up. So to do that, you need to send a start song command. So it's a two-step process. You press mute. And as soon as you press multiply, it will wait till it gets to the beginning of the loop and then send a start song command to Ableton. There we go. You'll also notice that if you press mute, Ableton keeps doing its thing. When you have sync set to OUS, you don't send a stop command unless you reset the entire loop. That kind of thing. So if you want to be able to stop Ableton and the EDP and then start them up again without erasing a loop, you would need to switch the, the sync mode back to out. 
Let's do that really quickly. I'm going to start in OUS mode. I'm going to record something really quickly. Mm, dirty volume pop. Okay. Let's reverse it just so I can show off. Mute, multiply. There we go. Now if I press mute on the EDP, Ableton keeps going. If we want to stop Ableton, then we have to go back to out as our sync mode. And now Ableton will stop every time we hit mute. Again, that's assuming that the mute mode is set to STA, set to start. And as we talked about before, if you want to restart the loop and not restart Ableton, you get out of mute with undo. And then if you want to restart Ableton at some point, you've got a couple of options. You could mute and then get out of mute with a second press of mute. Or you could change the sync mode back to OUS do the mute multiply setting, and it'll come right back in on the downbeat. It's also worth pointing out that the mute multiply combination gets used in two different types of sync. If you're controlling something with the Echoplex as a master, that sends a start song command. If you're using the Echoplex as a MIDI slave and it's receiving sync, then mute plus multiply sets it into a realign mode. It waits for the next downbeat from whatever it's following, and then it restarts the loop from the beginning. There are ways that you can do realign and send start commands through MIDI without having to mute the Echoplex from the front panel. So you can effectively get realign and start song commands received or sent without having to silence the loop. Those things are available through direct MIDI control. At some point, I'm sure I will get into more direct MIDI details with the videos, but for right now, I want to stay focused just on what's possible through the front panel. So that's a crash course in using the Echoplex as a MIDI sync master. Thank you again very much to Jeff Evans for suggesting and commissioning this. I also want to send a very deep thanks to Bernard Wagner, Todd Reynolds, Andy Butler, and everyone on the Looper's Delight Facebook community. I ran into some technical issues over the course of figuring out how to configure the Echoplex as a clock master, and everyone at the Looper's Delight site, and Todd, Bernard, and Andy in particular, were very, very helpful. So thank you so much for helping to make this possible, guys, and for making me sound like I know what I'm doing. Always appreciate it, and I can always use all the help I can get in that regard. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will talk to you guys next time.